What's happening, Coachella Valley? This is Craig Campbell for CoachellaValley.com. I'm here with my co-host, Francoise Rhodes, <laughs> traveling with Francoise.com, and we're at the Fane here in Greater Palm Springs area and at an amazing country club. You can see it behind us right now. You know, we may give the name a little bit later, and uh, we can't invite you down. You know, it's a membership-only club here, but look at the view we got. Hey, it's everyone. incredible out here. I see you guys are already starting to come on board. Oh. Appreciate that. Uh, beautiful okay. day out here. Lots to talk about. You know, things are happening here in Southern California, and uh, with our governor, it really is the breaking news and the news that's kind of surrounding all the events. Tamale Festival was this weekend, uh, last year. Can you believe it, Francois? So was the Festival of Lights in downtown Palm Springs. So, didn't the parade. happen. To, I mean, didn't happen. Look didn't, at everyone out wow, there. Wow, you guys hey, are coming on, how's right? It going? You just want to see what we were doing. <laughs> yes, we have our masks on. Hey, I'm going to take mine off. I'm going to um, take mine, too, because no one is around us. Thank you so we much. We are out here by ourselves, but That's we have true. them just in case. So we, we kind of pulled over in the corner, but yeah. look at the view we got. Uh, yeah. We got people right behind us golfing right now. Uh, about to do a... Just don't breathe on me. I think it could be a bogey putt here. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, PGA West is coming out here. You know, they're coming to a uh, theater near you right out here at PGA West, the uh, American, American Express. Express. But there's, there's no, no, no fans. There are no fans, no fans but yes. uh, and no rock concerts this year. Uh, I have to sit up really tall because Craig is so, his torso is so big. If I slouch, just look at this. I could do this. Look at, there you go. All right, everyone. I'm yeah, going to share over okay. uh, while she's doing her, her morning exercises out here. Exercise. And uh, I know she has some things to say. Yeah. So oh, I'll be right back at you. So you thanks so much for joining us today on live what's happening in Coachella Valley we are in Palm Desert it is beautiful out here in fact for us desert rats is a little chilly it's about 68 degrees but it is supposed to warm up this week until in the 70s so it's been beautiful we have been so fortunate and not received any of those high winds that have been just tearing through the other side of the mountain in California. Here, all I saw you look at me there for a second. What, the high winds? That the winds were tearing through? <laughs> tearing through. <laughs> uh, rampaging through the Coachella Valley because of everything that's going on. Hey, Vicki, course. thank you for joining us this morning. I'm we appreciate it. Look at this. Here. Oh, here we are. Okay. Is that Joel? Thank you, Joel. Yeah, I'm leaning in. Dan Scanny. Thank you, Dan. 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 Good morning, Good Dynamic Duo. Yes, we are here at Gary Swartz, Lane Flown. They are watching Vicki Lee Mills. Good morning. Beautiful day. Yes, it is a beautiful day. We do have things to talk about besides the uh, new shutdown, uh, closed down, stop living order that's out there. Uh, there Does are it some say things. stop living in the order? I, I think it's close. Wow. You know, as news reporters, we really like to get factual. <laughs> Uh, stop living. New, uh, Newsom has put out a stop living and it's order. Not funny. It's not true. It's not, terrible. It's not true. No, we're horrible. working through it. But I mean. I'm just killing me. Um, the small businesses. It just breaks my heart. What is going on for these small businesses? As if nail salons were the cause of all this. Restaurant owners. I know restaurant owners who put in a hundred thousand dollars or more to make these beautiful patio areas so people can eat outside and enjoy that. And now they say no. So there's pros and cons to all of this it's a big old mess out there and pretty soon christmas will be canceled also and new year's and we won't have to worry about it well i'm gonna have to get back in here to save this show guys this is a positive show it People, is places positive. And i'm things. just saying that could i'm not quite shared that over could. yet i haven't all put right, it on right. her page i will move away from that Talk to okay people. this week actually i went over to the mall because i needed all the bad is it weird that all the batteries all my watches the battery died at the same time is that strange or what? All of, I guess probably because I had them all replaced at the same time. So I took him over to Expert Repairs at the mall by Joseph, and he changed all the batteries for me. So I just want to give a shout out to him because he is open in the mall, struggling like everyone else. So going over Westfield Mall and he'll change the so batteries. So how does the new order affect our Westfield Mall? Do you know? Well, certain retail stores they can be open, they can be open but it's a capacity 20%. of 20% capacity. There you go. So that's the thing is that so we'll a lot of things aren't changing but we'll be talking about yeah. some things that are changing. You yeah. know and and I'm going to come right back at you guys. Uh we're going to have from the Village Pub, mm -hmm. the Village Pub. I think it's called a Village Pub, right? David Mariner and remember we talked to him before he sure. did a little bit of sharing downtown Palm Springs. Did you know his restaurant closed. He was very mm -hmm. challenged, frustrated. Uh, very active on social media, and he's been so excited about the new opening. And now, he's he's built, yeah. he's spent money outdoors downtown Palm Springs. Going to learn a little bit more exactly what's going on. Are the restaurants spanning well, together? I thought this was a positive show. It is. Okay. We're going to figure out what's happening <laughs> down positive. there. Well, 
We got a report. And I know. This is what's we are happening. reporting. Anyway, we got David Mariner. We're going to be calling him in uh, maybe five or six minutes and get a so, take from him. Anthony so. just jumped in. Hi, Anthony. Can How we, you doing? Can Steve you hear Sumter? us? Yeah. Can you know. hear us? We I know. know. I'm a news anchor too. This is killing the valley. Okay. Who said that? Joel said that. Yeah, I know. It's a. I hear. So have compassion when you hear the commercials running and see the commercials running on TV, radio, social media that talk about places being open. We please keep in mind that they have to pay to get all that changed again. And some of these smaller businesses won't have the funds to change some of these holiday ads that are out there. So just use some common sense with them and know that they're not trying to run the wrong stuff. They just. They just have to pay when they have to change all these ads. So Michael Alf Allard says she's absolutely right, but this guy can't handle the truth. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. All right. Anthony. Okay. We, okay. Well, let's not go too far, you guys. We want everyone to be comfortable. We don't make people uncomfortable. They're already uncomfortable enough. I mean, they're already. Anyway, there's still, there's a lot of weirdness going on out there and I completely get it. I sometimes, and there's a lot of depression. There's a lot of, it's crazy, but let's look, look at it the other way. It's a beautiful day today. The sun is shining. It is uh, going to be Christmas. We're going to make it the best that we all can make it. The decorations, I totally decorated my house. I didn't put a tree up because of me running back and forth to work, but I decorated the chamber. Only thing I didn't do there, no tree. So we are holiday decorated. We are holiday decorated here. So let's enjoy what we can. So we're going to give you a little bit of facts and information because it is kind of tough. Uh, we did have an order yesterday. Um, if the ICU, intensive care units, are below 15% capacity in Southern California, which is a quite a large region, five regions that have been cut out now, all the way from Ventura County basically down uh, through San Diego and including us, if we're below 15%, which we uh, indicated 13.1% on Friday night, 12.5% now. We're below the point uh, that they're measuring, which means for the next three weeks, we're going to see everybody close down, and there are a lot of things that are closing. Uh, restaurants are no longer. You can do dine out and back to where we were. Pretty much, if you think about the original lockdown order, uh, and go back to, I know she put your mask on. I did because we're getting, people are upset about that. Oh. So I know for our safety. So if you don't, you're fine. I have okay. mine on. Okay, so great. we can, why don't we switch back and forth? Okay, fantastic. How does that? Okay, okay. we'll do that. So Good. that way one of us is protected at at one time. How's that? Does that Appreciate make Appreciate the feedback happy? and uh, communication. Thank you so much. Uh, so what I was saying is that if you kind of go back to the original lockdown, that's that's where we're at. So, so hard. You know, the zoos are gone. You can't do the parks anymore. Uh, hiking trails and things like that. Exercise allowed. Uh, of course, you want to be masked up, and um, you know you got to do it with your family. The curfew is still also in order. Essential workers are still working and are able to go to work. Uh, right now, we're looking at intensive care unit capacity. Um, oh, I've asked a question. I put an article out. I think it's very very important to understand intensive care capacity throughout Riverside County, Coachella Valley, completely different in different areas. And Southern California, going all the way up to Ventura, yeah. is quite a big swath. And each area has its own uh, different things going on. Mm -hmm. uh, cities and counties can be more restrictive, but they can't be more lenient uh, than what the California order that just got put out. So. What the challenge is, as we're moving forward in all of this, is um, that number becomes very critical. Intensive care unit uh, capacity, I don't believe includes the emergency capability of taking a room. You can take a room, I verified this with regional hospital, mm -hmm. uh, people there, officials there, employees there, uh, high up enough to give me the information that you can take a room, you can take an entire floor of regional and convert it to intensive care unit literally in a day or two. In other words, you could take a room and make it an intensive care unit room by putting certain facilities and people in that area and instantly increase capacity two or three times. In addition to that, I just got word that the field hospital, remember that they built the field hospital down at the Riverside yeah. County uh, uh, grounds over there uh, originally, is still has the equipment and still can take patients. So it's available. It's the same place that they're doing the testing. Uh, got confirmation today that that facility it can be ramped up instantly. So when we get to intensive care unit uh, numbers, um, what it includes, I don't think it's including all the emergency capabilities and the capacity that we can add. 
Um, I, you know, I don't know. I'd like to have more discussion around that because I think it's important. Uh, right now, all the headlines say our intensive care is so low that we may have some challenges and troubles. But when you can add a room overnight or a floor yeah. overnight or do a field <laughs> hospital, I just want you guys to know that uh, I believe that we're okay here in the Coachella Valley. Well, and then we're getting a lot of people asking us, is the farmer's market open? Farmer's yes. market are essentials because of the produce there. I know in Borrego, our farmer's market is open. The farmer's market should be they, open. I believe so. it will remain open. And yes. let me tell you why it took them a while to open up. Because they had to kind of meet protocols. They mm -hmm. had to go through cities and others mm -hmm. that had to approve. Uh, we just had the one in Palm Desert move to San Pedro, the new downtown location, the new dreaming downtown location that Palm Desert City uh, is looking to build there along San Pablo. Oh, that corridor. they did have it the other day. It was yeah, open. They moved I it drove up, by there. Yeah. Moved it there on yep. Wednesday. Had their very first one. So things like that are exciting. Uh, yes. our, uh, downtown La Quinta right now having its uh, No market. bars are open. Nope. As there's no bars Restaurants open. aren't So Gary wants open. to go to a bar. Restaurants as of tonight you can do open, it. That's but right. take out. A takeout take out. and of uh, course delivery. Now so. some of the state parks, this is interesting, they are closed for overnight camping. However, they are open for you to go hiking and doing all your stuff during the day. They're telling us to get outside, be outside. So I was reading last night that some of the state parks, no overnight, in fact, as of tonight, no overnight camping at all the state parks. I'm sorry, all of them. But they still are open for you to go in and hike and do all, all these things. So hey, make sure you stay tuned. We're going to be talking to oh. uh, Mr. Mariner in yes. just a little bit. Hey, David, stay with us. I'm going to call you in yeah. just a bit. All right. I want to get your take downtown Palm Springs. What's going right. on there? Yeah, okay. I mean, we got a lot we're trying of to keep it positive is uh, Anthony, I, I know you guys, you guys are all over the mark on here. Uh, the mask, yeah, I'm trying to keep it on my up and I'm going to take it down sooner or later. But okay. yes, I hear you. I I'm going to give David a call. want to give David a call? Oh, what do you think? Yeah, so we're going to call ahead. David uh, right Maybe now. Maybe he can answer some of the restaurant questions, too. We're getting a lot of that. of uh, Because um, the takeout, from what I hear, the ones that can continue to do takeout and curbside pickup, they're still going to do that. So we're back to supporting the restaurants that way. No, none of this is funny, uh, but we're all dealing with it. So, uh, and there's a lot of depression out there. So we have to put the... Oh. Hello, this is David. Hey, David, Craig Campbell and Francois Rhodes. You are live right now on What's Happening Coachella Valley. Can you hear us? What's up, Coachella Valley? This is David Mariner from The Village. There you, you go. You, Craig? Yeah, good to go. Hey, man, I want to know what's happening there. You know, we had an order come down. I know you know all of this as you're dealing with it as a restauranteur, entrepreneur, uh, very active on social media, and uh, you've been very vocal about all the changes. Man, I'm feeling for you and your family. Tell me what's about to happen and what you think is gonna happen. Okay, well, we own a couple businesses in town. My wife and I own Father's Simple Perfections. Uh, it's a salon in downtown Palm Springs, uh, right in the heart of downtown. And then we, I'm also a partner with uh, Yuri Perula for uh, The Village, which is a restaurant slash bar it used to be known as The Village Pub. And both, uh, due to the COVID regulations that were set forth by uh, this new stay-at-home order by the governor, uh, due to the, you know, the ICU beds going below 15%, I believe they're somewhere at 12.33% last I checked, uh, we are going to have to close our doors as of 11.59 uh, tonight, but that's kind of a misnomer because there's a 10 o'clock curfew, so we have to close the doors mm -hmm. of the village at 10 p.m. tonight. And that's going to be for three weeks. I understand it goes three weeks, and then after that, they look forward four weeks. I know it's kind of confusing, but at the end of that 21 days, they look forward, they project forward four weeks to determine whether that risk is still there or something like that. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. You know they don't want to have a New Year's Eve party. So this this three weeks takes us to December 28th. Mm -hmm. You know they're going to do another week. They're not, if they're not going to let us do Christmas, they're not going to let us do New Year's Eve. They're, uh, this was a, a whole ploy to take away any of the travel, to discourage travel for... I, and they, they're open about it. They want to discourage travel and families getting together during this time, and they don't want any establishments to throw events that could uh, lead to uh, groups... So I believe this is a minimum of three weeks, but you're going to see it go four weeks or longer. Wow. wow. What, what will tough. that do? How, how are you going to handle your employees once again coming in and out? Uh, and how will you handle uh, both businesses being affected here uh, just financially? Uh, that is a question. 
question that uh, we are eagerly awaiting the, the announcement um, of hopefully another PPP loan or some IS, SBA loans that are going to be available, hopefully. I mean, if, if, if you're a government and you shut the city down, you better, and, and, and the state down, you better provide some type of help to business owners. Otherwise, um, if we go back to the, the reason you first called me uh, a couple months ago was the video I made of, you saw how dead Palm Springs was becoming and the, the vacant buildings and all the other places that are happening. It's only going to get worse. And uh, it's a really scary time for both of our businesses um, and Mariner Media as well. It's, we are uh, very concerned with moving forward or are we going to have to start from the bottom and start all over, you know what I mean? Is it, there, a, I know David, you were working before to kind of uh, get some of the other restaurants, uh, talking to them, working with the other restaurant owners down there downtown. Kind of working yes. with the block and and you know single lanes double lanes all the things that you were trying to configure down there is there a possibility across either the coachella valley or cities of where restaurants or entrepreneurs are going to start to get together and collect and and be more like like i've actually heard I'm pasadena sorry. Like, yeah. like pasadena did i'm already hearing uh from friends that actually run restaurants in some famous areas that are saying Craig, we're wondering whether we're just going to go forward because we need to, not not any other yeah. reason, but for survival sake for their actual I, family. I get what you're saying. Uh, the thing is, Palm Springs is about a strip. It's about two strips. It's about Palm Canyon Drive and it's about Arenas. Um, and what Palm Springs does is they have a strict code enforcement. If you look at the other cities, they don't even enforce like the live music ban or the, the late closures. Uh, because our, our sheriff, uh, the Riverside County Sheriff, even says that this is bullying and there's no way to keep businesses alive if you do this. But our our, our city council has decided to take away business licenses, take away ABC licenses. That ABC is going to be behind that. But there is no way to have, we've met with other business owners, there's no way to keep this uh, survivable in Palm Springs without, uh, and, and, and you can't even, even if I wanted to, say, you know what, we're going to let those who want to come and we're going to make our choices and, and be free. Our city is so against that that they would shut us down. I, I, I might even get a penalty or a fine just for saying what I just said. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, let's hope not. And, uh, you know, David, uh, you know, I hope that you can continue to be a good voice out there to help educate people. Because people need to know what's going on on intensive care unit and what's happening downtown Palm Springs and need to know it's different cities yeah. and different stuff like that. Uh, sorry guys, we got a little bit of noise uh, on the other side of us. Hopefully it's not interrupting you. Yeah, we are outside on a patio, so, so yeah. yeah I, I, it's kind of hard to hear you, but okay. I, I understand you have to be outside because the minute you step foot one indoors, you're going to get COVID, you know, so. Hey, David, I wanted to thank you for calling. Did you have some questions for David? No, that's fine. Okay. I, I really I, appreciate it, David. Second, I can't agree Okay. Yeah. Hey, David, I want to say thank you so much uh, for or for sharing and coming on. And, uh, you know, I'm going to still stay in touch with you guys. Uh, our prayers for your family and uh, and for revelation on just how to move forward. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up, Craig, is uh, have you guys heard anything about the casinos? Because I saw in the shutdown order that they were supposed to close the casinos as well. But um, like, the thing that's really bothersome for Palm Springs is if we do the shutdown, how come casinos can stay open? Yeah, I mean, no. that's been a big question across the board, and I don't see that the orders are affecting the casinos as of yet. I haven't seen any uh, communication in that regard, uh, both in the documents or otherwise. I so, have not either. It has to do with the land that they own on Indian Reservation. Because think about this. If, it's like putting a, you're trying to stop a leak in a bucket, but there's holes everywhere. No, we, we agree. Everywhere. I mean, that's the whole challenge is yeah. it's not very uniformed. And uh, I'm not sure if just one person can make these decisions. Hey, David, yeah, thank you I so know. much. I appreciate you guys. Uh, All right, thank you. And I'll be back at you. Okay, thank take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Have a good day. You know, all, all this is really so startling, and, and, and again, he said there are so many holes in this, and completely, actually, I'm sitting at a table here at a restaurant, so I don't really even need my mask no, if I no. look at it that way. We got water so, and yes, coffee. So, yes, we have water and coffee, so Closest we are person here. to us is 20 feet, but, you know, we're not going to get into that, you know, as media. Yeah, no, but because I am taking it off now, okay, um, because, but, you know, what bothers me about this, he's talking about government loans. The word saying loan, loans mean you have to repay back, Right. Morning. so they want to help people with loans, but yet, how, how are they going to get the money in the long run to recoup to pay back? I mean, it's just oh, really, yeah, really just so difficult right, right now. Oh, yeah. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, our patio just got really busy. Well, out we here, actually yeah. moved ourselves to a quiet place. <laughs> well, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's life, right? We'll just deal with it. We're just going to go right on. So, Craig, someone was asking about golf. Yes, the golf courses, outdoor activities, they want to remain open. They want people outdoors. Yeah, Golfing golfers seems will to be, be golfing. big. Uh, yes. Christmas tree sales uh, were huge. Uh, uh, wreath sales were huge. Here's something. I went to the post office the other day. Sold out of international stamps. Sold out of Christmas stamps. Sold out of about every time it was stamp yeah. except the rolled stamps. Right. People are going to be mailing like crazy. They have not seen a run on stamps that they have in this last couple weeks ever at the post office. So we had lighted up El Paseo. So yeah. listen, there are going to be things. Uh, lighted up El Paseo. Uh, they just turned the Christmas tree light on. They were going to have fanfare. They are going to have speeches. They didn't do any of that. They just turned the lights on. El Paseo was very festive. They invited people to get in their cars, bring their family, mm -hmm. just their household, and drive up and down the street and enjoy all of what they've created up there. And they invited people to get out uh, and socially be responsible and walk with masks. Now, I don't know if those things would have still happened, you know, under these new orders. You know, I'm not sure how these uh, events that have already been planned uh, are really affected. But I do like the idea of a lot of drive-in. I think we see a lot of drive-in. We did a lot of streaming before. And speaking of streaming, Francoise, i got to tell you guys, December 6th is today. Children's Arts and Music Festival CamFest. Dot org official .org. What time? It's happening at six o'clock on this station and awesome. other social media stations across Good. the entire Southern California region. This is going to feature different genres. It's just a twelve-minute clip. Mm -hmm. Going to be every week, every day for seven days. Awesome. And it's going to feature our uh, different schools: Desert Sand Unified School District, the different classes, different genres. You know, whether mm -hmm. it's choir to rock to band to dance to different media and they're going to be public we're going to be showing that live at six o'clock tonight and of course it's a fundraiser for them uh, this is the fourth annual usually they do it at the indian wells tennis garden mm -hmm. second largest uh tennis stadium in the world and so now they're going virtual and uh, we're media sponsors supporting them coachella valley of course oh, great. and these are the types of things that will be coming your way so we're going to be back at giving you guys uh, music streaming uh, more entertainment in that capacity. I think that's the way for us to abridge this uh, and try to talk to more individuals like Mr. Mariner and others, either side, uh, about this discussion on the lockdown that is happening here in the Coachella Valley and throughout Southern California. All right, Blaine says, the city of Palm Springs will strictly enforce. The city will also suspend the business permit besides report to ABC. The casinos are fed regulated and don't have to follow state mandates. Oh, there, you uh, there you go. Lisa says, like you said, holes in the bucket. Blaine also said, David, please run for Palm Springs mayor. <laughs> you you got my vote, man. <laughs> well, there so, you go. Yeah, I mean, that's just... Uh, well, I think the discussion has to happen. So I know for us, it's always about events and things, uh, but I'm already sharing, you know, Tamale Festival closed. We're moving to the Cam Fest virtual festivals. What about like wildlife? We're not sure if they're going to say no. Yes, it's outside, but it's considered a zoo or a I'm museum. I'm pretty sure so it's a zoo, so it seems to it would, me that that would, would be a closed event as of midnight uh, tonight, or as David mentioned, we do have a 10 o'clock curfew. Um, so the truth is, everything will be closing down, uh, except for dining out, uh, not dining out, take out, and then of course uh, delivery for restaurants. Rest. So for those of you wanting to go eat, go today. Go to your if you want to go eat in right. a restaurant, go today. Go go, go 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 get out there. Take two or three them, days worth of uh, take home. Yes. You know whatever it takes Please. to support yeah, them. Support them because they're going to go back deal. to that takeout and curbside. It's hard to make a living it's and difficult. just think. 
the employees again. They're going to be cut back. Um, and you know what, Francois, it's so neat huh. when you do drive around town, all the different locations that have put outdoor seating. They've done it with such incredible uh, permanency. I mean, I see, I see structures that right. are actually drilled into the ground that seem like they will be there for a long, long, long time. I love it. And, and I, I ate out last night. You know, I've been trying to do it, trying to see what it feels like. I've done some walkabouts to show you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a neat atmosphere, well, especially here. Well, my question, here. now that you said that, though. In the Palm Springs area. And they did that um, dining area on El Paseo. What is going to stop people from getting their takeout and their curbside and going to an empty patio area and sitting there and eating? Which I mean, was the, as long as you're not congregating in groups. Which was the thought behind the Lupine Plaza. Yeah. What they decided to do there on Lupine right off of El Paseo in Palm Desert, the city of Palm Desert, is they set out a lot of tables and they put cover over it so that you could do that. Exactly. Like a, almost like a park so, in some, some way. I think it matters how things are actually uh, classified. If so, you think about yeah, it. those aren't restaurants. Patios that are just in, not in a restaurant enclosed area, but patios that are out like here where we are at the country club. What? Why would it stop me from getting my lunch in, inside the takeout, walking around to the back, and just sitting out here in the sun and eating? Well, I that's the new reality. So yeah. you know, just like trash cans or other things that might be out there for the public, why don't we start putting? tables here and there yes. where people can enjoy a sit down while they're walking mm -hmm. and doing Outside. things because that is the new reality. Yeah. Agreed. I'm oh, not really sure what's going to happen because a lot of businesses are contemplating. Our Riverside County Sheriff here, uh, Bianco, I think I'm saying mm -hmm. the name correctly. Uh, we also heard from LA County. Mm -hmm. We've heard from Orange County uh, Sheriff's uh, departments that have all said that they're not San Diego, I heard from and San Diego. Diego. Mm -hmm. They're not going to respond to calls uh, about people open, and so I'm not really sure how that's... And not wearing masks, unless there's some sort of violence involved, right. they just don't right. have the time to do so that. So yeah. they've all announced it. I'm not sure how much impact that's really going to have, because each business owner then still has to take the risks mm -hmm. of the city, uh, maybe county, yeah. maybe other county officials uh, responding, a uh, public uh, debate. Uh, it's a big topic. But you can see that we've now, we're almost nine months. Do you know on the 17th will be St. Patty Day? I remember yep. March 17th will be nine months uh, for lockdown that was going to mm -hmm. happen to flatten the curve. Um, we have flattened the curve, by the way. You know, that curve, uh, even though I know we have high ICU rates, mm -hmm. I've mentioned that there's a lot of extra capacity that I do wish that the media would, um, the reason I'm sharing it is because you should know that. You know, many of the, of the comments are, People actually write me, and they're afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you go out? How can you well, go out? And yet, when you think you might have three times, maybe even four times the capacity that's being reported, um, that should be supported. So I'm saying to you that we have lots of margins mm -hmm. of error. They're tracking every day and every second, um, and they're working real hard, of course, with the close down here to just you know stop it all and its tracks. Uh, as we know, we're all not really sure how effective it is, how it's really working. Um, it, the common sense factor has to kick in, though. And obviously, when you have holidays, like what happened over Thanksgiving, you know the cases are going to go. But yet, it, it's a choice. I understand that, too. I mean, that, that's the hard, that's, it's so difficult because the, the choice is, are you going to wear your mask and go and try to be social distanced, or are you not? And everybody has that choice. It is, and then, then when it spikes, okay, we all have to deal with the consequences. Oh, because that's what it is. So, yeah, it's. Uh, but I don't think. I guess what bothers me the most is I feel like they're almost. The government is almost picking on certain businesses that really, I mean, really is a nail salon, a large I, culprit. I know. I mean, a barber shop, a restaurant where people are already spread out. All no, we know the that place. the nursing homes yes. are the biggest culprit. Yeah. So, and there's no transparency there, so I'm going to go right back at it. So Do you know that nursing homes me. are closed? Yeah. So, so I can't go in to look. You uh, can't go in to look. Yeah. You can't check your family member. So. So what we really need to be doing is really be focused on where we see those deaths 
Mm -hmm. uh, I do think that California's done a great job of making sure we have field hospitals and other yeah. facilities and things that are around so far in Riverside County. I'd be reporting otherwise if I felt you guys were in danger. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have plenty of capacity. Um, I'm tuned in to the local hospitals here. Uh, there is capacity. Staffing issues are a challenge, but there's a lot of um, medical professionals around the country that are willing to move and go to areas that need to go to, including um, our federal government has done it before, provided medical support, ships and things like that off ports. we got a lot of ability if this thing really gets further along. What I'm excited about is we do have nine months of information, almost a year now, and I think that you know, at first we were just worried that it was just going to wipe everybody out. Of right. Yeah. Um, we know who it's affecting. We're working hard for a vaccine. And I do think that a lot of people uh, in the Coachella Valley, I see tons, the majority, wearing masks. Oh, I Every do too. Every single location yeah. I go into. I don't see any rampant um, parties or Coachella Stagecoach. All of our major it's, things have been, uh, are gone. Our convention gone. center doesn't has never been opened up. No. Most of our activity out here is outdoors. Mm -hmm. And good for us, those hiking trails are still open. Yes. You can still, I don't know, Nelson, you can only come here and stay at a hotel for essential business. Right. So I don't know if hiking and health is... Not essential. So yeah. that's going to be a challenge. No well. tourism. Yes. You have to be here for work-related business. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, tell us more. You're the travel expert. Uh, and we're going to talk a little so bit about it. It's so difficult for me because I don't, I feel terrible promoting travel because, frankly, I'm not even traveling right now because of my personal situation that I can't bring anything back to, right. to my family. Mm -hmm. But yet, there's so many great deals out there, too, on places that are trying their best to follow every guideline and more. And for people who are confident, and are not worried about other issues in their life. I mean, there's some great, great deals out there for places that you might have always wanted to go to. So you know, I am so torn. But you were talking about what we're learning, and we're also learning too. Remember when they wanted people to quarantine for 14 days? Right. Now it's back to 10 days. They're, they're bringing it back. They're seeing the 14 days. And I like, finally, finally someone said 14 days is not realistic. There you go. Finally, someone said that. You just can't say, don't go anywhere for 14 days. It's so difficult. It, it, it it's is really hard. difficult, and yeah. uh, especially when you're talking about stocking up for food or other supplies or yeah, things like that. I went like to that. Costco yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Tell and I that. thought it was going to be crazy. It was not crazy. Uh, thank you very much. People still had the toilet paper mentality. They had stacks and stacks of toilet paper that one of the employees was just handing to people <laughs> as they walked by which is still interesting. I don't quite get that. But anyway, so there's plenty of toilet paper at Costco, but there wasn't that panic like there was when all this started. There wasn't the the almost pushing and shoving and uh, just the, the strangeness. People were going, they were staying distance, they were going about their shopping, doing their shopping, checking out and leaving. So it was a, a more educated, that's the way I'm going to put it, a more educated environment. So I think something that has to change, and I feel like where the stressor and the stress points are, that government really does well across America, is when we have all the inputs and balance and there's communication and conversation around the choices that are being made. Right now a lot of them are executive orders, really it seems by one individual, you know, that maybe isn't taking into consideration all of that input, and I get it, it's under emergency orders, this yeah. is the, where uh, that governor is come, our governor is coming from. Uh, at the same time, you know, I hear from uh, Bianco and other sheriffs saying that when the order came in, they were never contacted. They were never like the like the government the uh, the governor's office didn't communicate with the sheriff's departments to say this is what we expect. Mm -hmm. How is your staffing? Do you think you could handle this for us? Here's your priorities. And how Here's, is your area too? And what's your area? Coachella like? Valley right. is certainly different than downtown Riverside or downtown San Diego. Do we need to move? You know, do you need to make adjustments in your own uh, configuration? Yes. We'd like to help you with that and put uh, some resources. You know that yeah. happened. So as a result, you just have some alienation going on with uh, the businesses. Mm -hmm. You have alienation going on with people that are totally desirous of seeing this lockdown because they believe that it's the, what's necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know both sides, I hear both sides. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people in between. Uh, people that are essential workers go to work every single day. Uh, and they're uh, experiencing things and they're concerned and worried. But then there's others that are like, well, I've been doing this for nine months. 
I'm not concerned in birth. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful I have a job. And I'm thankful because yeah. I see so many of my friends beginning to, you know, be more desperate, more frustrated, more right. challenged. Yeah. Uh, I, because they, they want to work. Myself. They want I to work. pretty much lost our entire event business. You know, you could, you know, yeah. please help us. Please support us. Please get mm -hmm. involved in what we're doing here in broadcasting. Uh, because we're an event-based uh, business, crowd-based mm -hmm. company, uh, trying to share all the wonderful things that are out there. And our, our dynamics have completely changed as well. You know, we're looking to reinvent ourselves. Uh, <laughs> streaming, it's really about that right now. So if you are interested in using which our is, distribution channel, stream along with us. Yeah, which is great. I mean, it, it's, it's certainly opened the eyes to a lot of people on how to stream and, and to live this way. But we don't want to make it so easy that we don't go back to reality also. We can do both. Now, the you, you write about jobs. There's a job fair. Oh, there you go. Happening at Spotlight 29? Yes. Tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 3. So our own Cathedral City Agua Caliente Theater opened up, I mean, uh, casino okay. opened up just before Thanksgiving. That We've got a lot of employment happening here yep. in our casino. Spotlight, and they are saying $25 an hour. Uh, guaranteed includes wage and tips at uh, their restaurants. Bars are looking for health care benefits are included. Dental, vision, all of this. And they have a lot of positions open from food and beverage, table games, facilities. So Spotlight 29, job fair tomorrow for those of you looking and, from 10 a.m. to 3. And if you want live music, the Rock Yard at Fantasy Springs is still rocking on. Still, yeah. uh, I've been hearing people are still enjoying that. It's been one of their go-to places because choice. you can do it. Yeah, it's, so it's choice. We're not really sure what will happen. Uh, as David said, there's a lot of restrictions. Like, mm -hmm. like Pump Springs is very strict. He doesn't believe that the restaurants could really collectively join together and really make an impact this time around. Uh, many people are waiting on the vaccine and thinking that this will be the change that will really help California open up back safely. In the meantime, we've got to get from here to there. Right. And I think that that's the moving target that we're all trying to figure out. I'm looking for more input, more discussion around it. Uh, and of course, we talk about COVID because it is the news and it is what's out there. And it's the biggest impact we have on the movement of people and things. Remember, our hiking trails are still open. It's really amazing out here. I see a lot of people hiking, biking. I see a ton of people running around. Now the parks are closed again, so that's kind of disappointing because I saw the skateboard, skateboard parks The ones open. that are enclosed are closed. And we also want to give a shout out to Johannes Restaurant. Oh, hi. There yeah, you go. We want to give them, go over there and order, order, order today. Go on their brand new patio that they built. Um, Officialcamfest.org is having yeah. their fundraiser tonight at 6 o'clock right here on this station. Come back, listen to some really cool yeah. entertainment by uh, the Children and Arts Music Festival, usually held at the Indian Wells. Tennis Garden is going to be virtual, and it's going to be live seven days. And just about a 10-minute snippet, uh, going to show you guys what's happening in our school districts and uh, all the talented musicians and other, um, I don't know, what do you call them? Media, modalities, different, okay. different ways of entertainment. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I, I'm, I have this question in my head that our, because I watch our numbers are kind of going up and down. Okay. It, it, it almost depends on really what we talk about. Interesting. But are you tired of hearing about it? I mean, Aren't we really? All? I are, am. Are you tired of hearing about the virus? Um, Fernando says, "Good morning. Hey, we got Fantasy Springs Casino tonight. Latino night. A little salsa there you go. and bachata. Right. Cumbias. Cumbias." Kumbayas? I don't, I'm messing that up. Yeah, but so, that's the point. Yeah, Re Rebecca says, last farmer's market today in La Quinta. Oh. So they are closing the farmer's wow. market today in is La Quinta? That, now, is that, a, and is that a city of La Quinta order, or is that something that they're feeling is coming from California? We're very yeah. interested. These are, the, these are all the things that we now have to parse, yeah. figure out. Uh, I was telling Francois before he came on the show, I haven't heard anything about gyms, even though I know they're in a category. Usually, I, you, awesome. I, you know, I've been looking and have written an yeah. article and had people ask me, I'm sure they're not going to open. No. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I'm sure it's in a personal care category or something, uh, but usually they distinguish it and it's out front. You know, let's say movie theaters, gyms, mm -hmm. zoos, it's usually right up there. Uh, this time they passed it by, I'm not really sure. Uh, some talk about World's Gym being an essential gym, isn't that interesting? They've got people inside and they've had people working out inside in Palm Desert World Gym in the Westfield Mall. My understanding is somehow they got an essential uh, rating. I don't know, but uh, it's my gym. 
Well, I so, thought some of the places brought in doctors and some of the happened. restaurants that's brought in food to sell to well, make them essential. Well, that's what right. um, happened. So I think uh, creativity, if you can do it, is a good thing. So must I think wear it became a training center, five and 10 PM. is what it is. What I was told okay. that the world's gym became a, a medical training facility for chiropractors, physical therapy, and doctors to utilize, and so it became essential. Mark Allen says yes. When I asked about if people are tired, tired of hearing about COVID, he <laughs> said, "Go about your business." Fernando Venegas Venegas says, "Must wear a mask, and it's from five till 10. So that must be tonight over at uh, Fantasy. Oh, uh -huh. Yes, for okay. the Latino. Oh, so yes, yeah, so you do have a, a, the casinos. You must wear a mask. They're That's right. The, that's right. They are doing that. And, so, and I do they check going through the door too? Uh, I know when I was in Las Vegas, they did check temperatures mm -hmm. at the door. Yeah. It's also one of the new mandates at Westville Mall, I believe. In other words, the malls and retail were made to check at doors. Oh, because I was now. just there. But that's not now that this yet, started. Right. Yeah. So they have and a little bit of time yeah. to implement. Uh, I think that they have to close within 24 hours and then implement within 48 or something. You know, there yeah. are some rules with regard to actually putting these things in place. Mm. But these are some little things that you probably see as a change going into your retail establishment. Did you see the candle sale at Bath and Body Works had a candle sale? There's one at the river and the line rolled out. Apparently it's a big thing, Francoise. I, I'm surprised oh, I you're not on it. I, I love candles, but maybe because they think of all these power outages that we're supposed to have too because of these red flag warnings. Remember, they've been threatening yeah. that power's going to go out, they're turning everything yeah. off. I took some pictures. I posted Did you buy them some on my, candles? No, because oh. the lines oh, the line. were oh. so long that yeah. there's no way it was going to wait outside. I, it, 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 it snaked for candles. So the okay. I mean, Christmas spirit is strong here. You know, the one thing I really like about everywhere you look around here, you're seeing wreaths, you're seeing lights. You're, yeah. The trees are being lit, you yeah. know. The, the Quinta Resort and Club has an amazing yeah. light. What are they doing Good. at the top of Palm Springs? The, the, uh, tram? I yeah. haven't heard a word. Nothing. Mm -hmm. They've been very quiet Will up there. Will that be open or closed? Uh, the tram has been open, but again, it's been modified. It's to transportation. Ten, ten people. Uh, and it's transportation now. A tram, But they've been very, keeping a very low key. I used to get releases constantly from them. Uh, there's been nothing. I talked to them about giving tram passes away. Obviously, with their limited capacity now, it won't be quite a while before anybody is giving tram passes away because they're full. Well, I'll give you an example. The uh, limited. Yeah. I checked in October. Okay. Okay. For mm -hmm. tram passes when it first opened, and the very first one available online was almost like three weeks past yeah. that. So, yeah. so you can see that now we're all the way in December. Mm -hmm. They could have that filled up. I don't even know how much. And uh, I believe it's transportation. So they were able to get it classified as essential transportation, and probably will stay open. I just don't know. So these are some of the things that I think over the next week that we'll be working on mm -hmm. and learning about. So when you guys come back to us next week that we'll have a little better understanding of what will be open and what yeah. won't be open and what you guys can actually do here in the Coachella Valley in the greater Palm Springs area. Uh, I'm Craig Campbell for What's Happening in Coachella Valley and I'm with my co-host. Francois Roots, yeah. <laughs> and we are live, uh, doing our best to let you guys know what's happening here in our neck of the woods. Of course, we're under a uh, big lockdown that's moving forward. We're not sure how everyone's going to respond to it. Uh, we've heard about the casinos being a big, um, well, it's an entertainment spot here. The restaurants are open. You can go inside. No smoking ordered temporarily, I think, in all of our casinos. Right, yeah, and because you'll be dropping the mask down, and they don't want that, so you can't be dropping it smoke. But that makes up, it so better, that's... really, for non-smoker, because one right. reasons I don't really it's enjoy the casino. Right. So mm -hmm. it might be a new opportunity if you have never really gone in. And don't forget, you don't even have to gamble, right? Some music, you can have some libations, right? Yes, you, I know. You I mean, could just walk through and look at people. You got some interesting comments? Well, I, this is just came in. And I also want to point out something to, to everyone out there. As much as Craig and I want to, I mean, we really want to tell you what we know is correct. Sometimes we're wrong. We're also here for an entertainment value as well. Yeah. So and please keep that in mind. And we just wanted to share things with you. So in Desert of Hot Springs, this comment says, Francoise hit the nail on the head minutes ago when she said she doesn't understand the toilet paper hoarding. The rational fear of running out of toilet paper in the minds of people <laughs> is the exact same fear zone that is being exploited. So this goes on and on, it's, and it says it's that simple. So these comments are all in the comment line, and you can actually read all of these. Um, yeah, our so, agenda yeah. is to share. 
and uh, try to bring facts. I think the discussion is happening. And I think we should be a part of it, Francoise. I don't know how we could play that part. We're not going to please everybody, obviously. Wait, yeah. some of you are going to want to rip us apart, and that's your choice. I mean, um, we well, can always bring me in yeah, uh, to interview me on yeah. your shows, and, I, and maybe I'll give you yeah. my my yeah, direct really opinion. Well. What we try to do here is give you guys information that will help you understand. Do you want to get on a Southwest Airlines flight yeah. to come here? Mm -hmm. What's open? What's not? You know, when you when you think about. Uh, maybe a birthday today or an anniversary. Is there something open? Can I go to it? The answer is yes. You got a little bit of time. Yeah, I would don't say forget enjoy to, it. to wish people happy birthday. Send them those cards. You're Give them a call. You can still do that. You're still going to be able to order. And yes. You're going to be able to get curbside. Yes. And you're going to be able to do things. And, and we're going to become even more creative here in the Coachella Valley. I have seen a community, Francoise, uh, that has absolutely rallied, mm -hmm. that has tried to, okay. to, to take each step in stride, deal with it from uh, all, all levels. The health industry, uh, down to those people that are concerned and think that no one should be going outside, to those that feel like we should take on our own, you know, personal liberties and so on and so on. Uh, Coachella Valley has done a pretty great job. We're trying. I believe yeah. that our hospitals are okay, meaning I don't think that we're uh, uh, anywhere near our capacities here, mm -hmm. from my understanding. Our uh, staffing's the biggest challenge, but staffing can come in and go out. I know I've shared this before. Uh, I just want to give an encouragement. Uh, continue to live life, get out there, make sure you're communicating, um, get involved with us in streaming. If you're a musician, if anyone's listening to this, we're interested in streaming yoga, uh, comedy. It's yeah. so uh, one thing you should music. never say when you're on radio, TV, streaming live, if anyone is listening. Oh. Just give them a clue on that one. Right. Never say that, folks. You never say that. Never, never do that. Well, I thought Always they were just watching. That. Maybe they weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're all right. listening. Thank you yeah. very much. Well, you know, she's the professional. Uh, I got sucked into all this because I'm interested in streaming, yeah. and I've been interested in technology for a long, long, long time. So how many uh, views did you get walking around La Quinta last week? Four, oh my. Four, I don't know how many, over 4,000 when I looked or something, walking around downtown. I'm, I yeah. mean, we've had some very uh, big... Um, my, my El Paseo ones, I think, are eleven and 12,000 views. People are interested in the walkabouts and yeah. the things to show them We're what is really happening. We're going to walk about next week. Yeah. We'll look around the RV, Mike Thompson's. There we go. What do you think there. about that? We're going to steal an RV <laughs> at Mike Thompson's. We're just going to let them do know ahead of time. Do you know, speaking of that, that is right now a, a big problem. That people oh, are, are actually stealing, stealing, not from the lots, but they're going to, um, well, I don't want to say so, how they're doing it. Okay. I don't want to say how so they're doing it, but be, there's a little epidemic be, now. So it used to be like Ford Focus was the big car right. stolen, and now, then it's, the Camry. now it's the RV. Now it's the RVs or trailers. It's, I mean, you guys are just great. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so anyway. RV sales are skyrocketing. Oh, they're crazy. Uh, yes. You know, people aren't traveling across <laughs> internationally. That's why, you know, Francois mentioned earlier, you know, stamps, everything. We have a lot of festivities in houses, uh, you know, in mm. homes. Uh, I already saw the Christmas tree um, uh, lot right there on Monterey and Highway 111. Are, are they closed? Is it closed? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, they were pointing everything down because there was only ch like two Charlie tree trees left. Our bakery? Charlie Brown trees. In left. our farmer's market in Borrego Springs, our bakery guy, our fresh bakery guy, he has sold out every Friday within two hours. Wow. And he keeps bringing more and more each Friday. And, and what would happen so, if he went online? You know, so maybe see. we should talk about that. Maybe I, we could ship some of his great stuff around the world. I don't know. I have one every Friday. Alyssa says, how often do you do this? We try to do it every Sunday. Sunday, 11, 11. 11, 11. Yeah. Uh, Fernando says, I'm watching and listening and watching the Miami Dolphins play. Fantastic. We'll watch that football before yeah, that goes. Great. Who knows where. And you can always Melody replay Melody says, us. good morning. Yes, you can play us over and over. Oh, okay. It's 11.58. So we have another show, <laughs> uh, Traveling with Francoise. We're going to be coming right back at you. It's going to be on Today's California. Yes. have a little bit of work to do just before that so we're gonna say goodbye so. and I hope you guys have really enjoyed our beautiful view back mm -hmm. here uh, my inverse logo CoachellaValley.com uh, traveling with Francoise over here yep. and I'm Craig Campbell for what's happening at Coachella Valley live Sunday at 11 11 and uh, thank you Francoise say goodbye oh goodbye I'm just saying should I go press the button do you want me to do it I'm gonna go do it you want to do it okay. you want to go do it so actually I'm gonna have Craig on me uh, come back with me on the travel show so we can just kind of kick some ideas around um, because like I say I just have some kind of fun things to talk about we can talk about a little bit of everything and we'll just discuss so we'll be right. streaming it here live as to? well but today's california.com is where you can find it today's california.com <laughs> where we'll be doing it live and uh, thanks again okay
tell you get her nails done. No, I have my nails.